Hey guys, I'm back and I created a three-part series on magnesium and calcium, a very fascinating topic. I'm going to start out with the basics and we're going to focus on magnesium in this video. So magnesium is involved in over 300 enzymes. Enzymes are those proteins that do the work in the body and they help the body uh, in its chemistry. So magnesium is a mineral that is a co-helper in a lot of different things. Uh, protein synthesis, which basically making protein, hair, nails, muscle, energy production. So magnesium is like the spark plug that allows energy to be uh, created in the mitochondria. That's the energy factory of the cell. It's also involved in bone, muscle, nerve, and glucose, carbohydrate metabolism. You need magnesium. So if you're deficient in magnesium, you get cramps. Those cramps could be in your back, in your legs, in your calves. It could be even the arteries. And this is why uh, if you're deficient in magnesium, you can have high blood pressure and your arteries become stiff. When you're low on magnesium, you increase the risk of getting diabetes. Why? Because magnesium is involved in regulating insulin and preventing insulin resistance. Okay, it keeps insulin in check. So if you're low in magnesium, insulin resistance is worse. Okay, in fact, if you take magnesium, you'll improve insulin resistance to a certain degree. Okay, kidney dysfunction. You need magnesium to make sure the kidney functions normally. If you're deficient in magnesium, you could develop arrhythmias, which is an abnormal heart rhythm. Uh, mitral valve prolapse, if you're deficient. Insomnia, increased stress and anxiety and fatigue, okay? Now, how do you become deficient in magnesium? One is from the diet. You're not consuming enough greens, okay? At the heart of deep leafy green vegetables, you have chlorophyll, and magnesium is the mineral involved in the chlorophyll molecule. It's very similar in chemistry to blood. In blood, you have iron, and in chlorophyll, you have magnesium. Okay, so when you have too much calcium in the body, you can create a magnesium deficiency. And if you have insulin resistance, you're going to be deficient in magnesium because you can't absorb these minerals. Uh, so your glucose will stay a little bit higher. Now, when you consume refined foods, especially refined carbohydrates, you, you create a, a magnesium deficiency. And of course, eating junk food and drinking alcohol and sodas will also deplete you of magnesium. If you have GI problems, whether it's an ulcer or scar tissue in your gut, or IBS, you won't be able to absorb as much magnesium. If you had a gastric bypass, you won't be able to absorb as much magnesium. Also, if you're on medications to lower acids or prevent the production of acid, as in antiacids, that alone will prevent the absorption of magnesium. All right, in the next video, part two, we're gonna talk about the relationship between magnesium and calcium and magnesium and potassium. Now we're on part two. Okay, so. Um, one thing you need to know about magnesium, magnesium is involved in relaxation. Calcium is involved in contraction, but it's also involved in cellular signaling and cellular reproduction. So the function of calcium goes way beyond just making bone. It's involved in a lot of different things. But as far as the interaction of minerals, uh, when you have low magnesium, you're going to have high calcium. They kind of work opposing each other. So if you're high in calcium, you're going to cause a magnesium deficiency, okay? So they kind of teeter-totter. Now, when you're low in magnesium, you'll actually be low in potassium because they, they work very closely together. They don't oppose each other. They work e with each other. And if you're low with potassium, you have low magnesium. So how does this relate? So let's say, for example, you're taking a supplement, a straight, pure potassium supplement without magnesium. You'll end up finding that it won't really work without magnesium because you need this with this. And this is why when you eat food, you always have these minerals together, not isolated. Or when you take an electrolyte powder, you normally see all the electrolytes together when you take them. They're more functional that way. Let's say you have insulin resistance, which most of the population has. You'll end up with a magnesium deficiency. You'll have excess calcium and you'll have low potassium. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about calcium. Now we have the inside of the cell and we have the outside of the cell. As far as this electrolyte calcium, you have 10,000 times more concentrated calcium on the outside of the cell 
than you do on the inside of the cell. Now, potassium is much different because you have 98% of the potassium inside the cell and only 2% outside the cell. But calcium is different. In order for calcium to be transported, you have this thing called a voltage-gated calcium channel. This is basically just a gate or a door to allow calcium to go in and out, and also it controls other things as well. You need calcium to even produce insulin from the pancreas, so it's involved in a lot of different functions, including signaling uh, certain things. Now, if you have too much calcium inside the cell and these, this ratio is not correct, you develop a condition called intracellular hypercalcinosis, which is a fancy term for you have too much calcium inside the cell. This is very, very dangerous, and it's very common for a lot of people. In fact, a drug that a lot of doctors use for high blood pressure is called a calcium channel blocker. So calcium channel blockers basically prevent the calcium from building up inside the cell, and you can lower blood pressure from that, okay? Because the excess calcium makes the arteries stiffer, and it raises um, blood pressure because it's no longer elastic, and you get too much contraction, okay, and not enough relaxation. So they use a calcium channel blocker. They're blocking in this channel right here to reduce blood pressure. Calcium channel blockers are also used in another condition called Raynaud's, and that's a condition where uh, the circulation at the end of your fingertips uh, is really bad and poor, where you get this like almost purple because the smooth muscle is uh, restricting blood flow to the end of the fingertips, especially if you're going outside in the cold or you touch something really cold. So calcium channel blockers improve that simply because they inhibit contraction and increase blood flow. And then we have bronchiospasm or asthma. Why would the calcium channel blocker improve a spasm in your lungs? Well, simply because it inhibits contraction in the smooth muscle in your lungs, okay? And you can breathe better. So if you have too much calcium that builds up inside the cell, you can have all sorts of issues. High blood pressure, you can develop anxiety, bipolar, migraines, myofascial trigger points. That would be uh, trigger points. Let's say you have certain knots around the body, like someone presses on them and it's very painful. Inflammation, cancer, because of the cell signaling problem, diabetes, We've talked a little bit about insulin resistance, neurodegeneration, uh, degenerative joint disease. There are just so many problems that can occur if you have an imbalance of calcium with too much calcium inside the cell. And when you go to the doctor and get your calcium tested, um, they don't actually check the calcium inside the cell. They may just focus on the calcium outside the cell. But to do that, you have to do an intracellular calcium test. Okay, guys, now in the last video, part three, I'm going to talk about what to do to get this calcium out of the cell and reverse this process. Now, we talked about magnesium. We talked about calcium. Now we're going to talk about how to get rid of the excess calcium outside the cell. There is 10,000 times more concentrated calcium outside the cell than inside the cell in relationship to this mineral calcium. We've never really had a problem with too much magnesium, but we definitely have a big problem with too much calcium. And I don't even recommend taking a calcium supplement unless you're taking it in a complex with other things, because if you're taking calcium carbonate, that's like, that's like basically rocks, and that can aggravate this condition. But what I want to talk about now is what to do to get this calcium out. There's several things you have to look at, okay? It could be you just need some vitamin D3. Now, if it's the summer and you're getting sun, well, you probably don't need any vitamin D. But if it's winter, chances are you might need some vitamin D to help this. And this is why a lot of times in winter, people start getting uh, bone pain and are, uh, kind of inflammation, not just from the deficiency of vitamin D3 itself, but from the accumulation of calcium, okay? It makes things stiff and rigid. This is why it causes blood pressure issues as well and muscle spasm and trigger points. Okay, you might just need more magnesium in the diet because you're not consuming enough leafy greens. At the heart of chlorophyll, which is the green of the blood of the plant, you have magnesium. Okay, a lot of people don't consume enough greens. All right, number three, omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, fish oils, salmon oil is the best. 
Uh, cod liver oil is great. There's a couple different types of omega-3. You have DHA and EPA. It's the EPA that will help lower the excess calcium. Okay, so omega-3 fatty acids. All right, then we get vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is different than K1. It's a fat-soluble vitamin that helps transport calcium out from the wrong places and into the correct places. So you may be deficient in vitamin K2. And guess where you get vitamin K2? In fatty foods. If you're on a low-fat diet, well, guess what? You might be deficient in K2. But if you're on a keto plan, a healthy keto plan, chances are you have enough K2 because it's a higher-fat diet, but it's low-carb. Okay, number five, too much glucose. If you're a pre-diabetic or you're a diabetic or you consume too many carbs because you're on a high-carbohydrate diet or you have insulin resistance, which you have high insulin, this scenario right here will definitely keep the calcium locked up inside the cell. This is probably one of the more common reasons why uh, people get high blood pressure and they have calcium problems and they have inflammation. Interesting. So going on a low carb diet, low glucose, you're fixing insulin resistance. Guess what? You're going to get rid of inflammation. Why? Because you're going to balance out this right here. And lastly, something called EMF, electromagnetic fields. Okay. Now the channel, the door, which opens um, outside the cell for calcium to leave is called a voltage-gated calcium channel. So there's electrical things going on, and EMF interferes with this channel to the point where the calcium won't leave. The calcium will get stuck inside the cell. So how do you get EMFs? This right here. Use the speaker on your cell phone. Don't hold it next to your head. Okay, I see people doing that all the time. The Bluetooth is going to be a transmitter. That's going to make it even worse because you don't want these signals to go close to your brain because the neurons inside your brain can start to malfunction simply because they fill up with calcium. And that can create all sorts of problems with degeneration in the, in the nerve cells and set you up for cancer and tumors and inflammation. All right, guys, there you have it. And thanks for watching.